Hopefully you found yourself in John chapter 4, uh, verses 43 uh, through 54. Uh, The following letter was found in a baking powder can that was wired to the handle of an old pump that offered the only hope of drinking water on a very long and seldom used trail across Nevada's Armagosa Desert. This pump is all right as of June 1932, the letter said. I put a new sucker washer into it and it ought to last five years. But the washer dries out and the pump has got to be primed. Now under the white rock, I buried a bottle of water out of the sun and the cork end up. There's enough water in it to prime the pump, but not if you drink some first. Pour about one-fourth and let her soak to wet the leather, and then pour the rest medium fast and pump like crazy. You'll get water. The well has never run dry. Have faith. When you get watered up, Fill the bottle and put it back like you found it for the next feller. Signed, Desert Pete. P.S. Don't go drink in the water first. Prime the pump with it, and then you'll get all that you can hold. Now hopefully you found yourself there in John chapter 4, verses 43 through 54. The Bible says, Now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor, in his own country. That when he was coming to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he had heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And when he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them, the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And he him, and himself believed in his whole house. Amen. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity we have to come into your house. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather, Lord, as a uh, body of believers. And Lord, I pray that you would never let us take it uh, for granted again, Lord. I pray that you would just help each and every one of us to just hear from your word tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would just help us to just leave here just being more fervent witnesses for you. And Lord, just help us to have our, our faith strengthened tonight. And I ask all these things in your name. Amen. So I'd like to preach to you a message tonight that I've entitled Simply Trusting. Simply Trusting. I want to take just a moment tonight to look at this state of this man's faith and see what we can learn from this man about our faith and if we can truly see where our trust lies. Now let me ask you a question. We are a week and a half out of Jubilee now, right? Week and a half out. It was a great Jubilee. The Lord spoke to my heart. I trust He spoke to your hearts as well. I know that many times the pastors come up here and he says, you know, raise your hand if the Lord spoke to your heart about something. Nearly, if not all, hands went up in the air. A week and a half out, are we still trusting the Lord in the decisions that we made for Him? Are we doing that or are we saying, well, it was easy to say then when we're coming to church two times a day, every day, but life in the real world just doesn't work that way. Isn't that how our minds work? But yet, if we can trust the Lord then, we can trust the Lord now. Whatever decisions that we've made, we need to stick with those decisions. Because the same God that convicted our hearts is the same God that can help us through those decisions as well. So I want to look at where our trust lies tonight. As we look at this passage tonight, we see that Jesus is entering into Galilee. He was coming into Cana where he turned the water into wine back in chapter 2. 
And we know from John's account of the gospel here that Jesus Christ, as of this time, has been baptized by John the Baptist. He's chosen some of his disciples. He has turned the water into wine. He's came into the temple and overturned the tables of the merchants there. We also see that Christ has spoken with and answered the questions of Nicodemus. This is where we see the most, arguably, the most quoted and beloved scripture in the Bible, John 3.16. Now following this, we see John's testimony of Christ and also when Jesus met the woman at the well. Immediately following that visit at the well, we see Christ telling his disciples that the fields are white unto harvest, Amen. but the laborers are few. Now this is thousands of years ago that we're talking about here. We know the fields are still white unto harvest. Amen. And unfortunately, the laborers are still few. How many of us tonight have enough faith to go out and tell someone about Christ? This brings us to where we are now. People are returning home from the feast in Jerusalem. The Gentiles welcome Christ back with open arms. But then Christ gets a visitor. Not just any visitor. We see that he was a nobleman. But not just a nobleman, a man who was about to have his eternity settled. Amen. We see that Christ sees this man. First of all tonight, I want to talk to you about the request of the Father. The request of the Father. Verse 46 and 47 in chapter 4. It says, So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine seeing your child at the point of death? The way that you would come to the only person that you knew could save him. Amen. Put ourselves in this, in this man's state of mind for just a little bit tonight. The request of the Father. First of all, the request was immediate. As soon as he heard that Jesus was coming to Galilee, can you imagine this Father? Knowing no doubt that he and his wife had called every physician and tried all the medicines that were available at that time. No doubt they had heard of this man Jesus and his miracles and no doubt Jesus was you know, uh, far away from them. And when it comes to the point of death, this father decides, I'm going to go to Jesus. We've tried everything else. He'd heard of these miracles. And here comes Jesus coming into Galilee. This man, we see that he was a nobleman. Now, we don't know exactly what his job title was, but we do know that he was most likely a government official of some sort. He may have even been a member of Herod's court. Can you think about that? This man, no doubt being a member of Herod's court, had access to the greatest physicians in the land. He was there working in the government, in this powerful government, he could have gotten his hands probably on any medicine available for his son. Anything. But nothing worked. Nothing at all. We don't know what his national or his social standing was, but what we do know is this man needed Christ to heal his son. But isn't that how we would be as well? A good father or mother should be willing to do anything possible to help their children in a time of a health crisis. The Bible says that this man besought the Savior. Now when I was reading through this, and I, I come across that word besought. Now in my mind, I just figured it was asked. You know, he asked the Savior. But it says he besought the Savior. Webster's 1828 says that it means to ask someone urgently and fervently to do something. To implore them and to entreat them. He besought the Savior to come down to Capernaum to his house to heal his son. Can you imagine how this man came to Jesus when it says he besought him? I don't think this man came to Jesus and said, hey, um, yeah, my, when you have time, my son is dying and I'd like you to stop by and visit him. So sometime, you know, within the next few weeks or so, if you can come by and visit, that'd be great. I'm, I'm sure we'd appreciate it. 
I don't think that's how this man came. I, I imagine that this man came when it says here that he told Jesus that his son was at the point of death. I can imagine this man came like any of us would. Knowing that our child was about to die, I, I, I can imagine this man getting on his horse or maybe in his chariot, riding as quick as he could to Jesus, jumping off of his horse or out of his chariot and asking the Lord Jesus, my son is dying, can you come? I can imagine this man seeing the importance of this. Not only was his request immediate, but it was important. His son was at the point of death. Now this man knew that there wasn't much time left for his son. I imagine that this man, no doubt, as he was running to the Savior, just hoping with every stride that he would make it to the Savior before his son would pass away. Can you imagine, as he gets to Jesus, no doubt out of breath, worn out, as he asked Jesus to heal his son, can you see the tears streaming down his face? Now can I tell you this, this request here, was not just a request that needed to be made for his son. We find out later that this man believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this truth here, this request to the Father asking for this healing for his son applies to each and every one of us. Just as this man saw that this need was immediate and that it was important, there's a more important need here that needs to be addressed. If you're here tonight and you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, Please let me step in the shoes of this man who is pleading for help for his son. And know that I'm not just up here preaching a message out of God's Word, but I'm pleading for you to make a decision for Christ tonight. Amen. Amen. Make a decision that's going to affect your eternity. Amen. I'm asking you to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. Amen. This man came asking for something for his son. Asking for a cleansing for his son, but what he needed was a cleansing for his soul. I'm pleading to you to accept Christ. Christ wants to cleanse you. But we have to accept that cleansing. Amen. Christ came and he died for you. I was uh, talking to the, uh, the kids downstairs this morning in Sunday school. And we were talking about the uh, resurrection of Christ. And uh, it, it's amazing when you talk to the, uh, to the young people about, you know, what they remember and uh, things like that. So I was asking about what last week's lesson was, and they were talking about the crucifixion and things like that. And uh, they are they're point blank when you ask them a question. So I held up the one picture and had, of course, the, uh, the three crosses there, and I said, who are the men on the two sides of Jesus? And, of course, they told me that they're the bad guys. I said, okay. I said, well, where did these men go when they died? And they told me one went to heaven and one went to hell. And I said, well... Why did one go to heaven? And they said, because he believed in Jesus. Amen. And I said, well, why did the other one go to hell? And they said, because he didn't. Amen. Like, it's, 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 it's just, it's as simple as that. Amen. Amen. But that's exactly how simple it is. Yeah. Right. You either trust in Christ for your salvation, right. or you don't. Right. Christ came and he died for you. He rose from the dead and he has a place in heaven for us. Right. All we have to do is accept him. If you are unsaved tonight, this need is important. And it's immediate. And don't let it pass you by. But maybe you're already saved here tonight. And you say, well, I've already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, so I can just sit back and go to sleep. Kind of like my son Declan is right now. <laughs> having an impact on him. But can I tell you this? The request here is a request that each and every one of us need to make to the Lord and Savior every day. Not for... Saving our souls, we only have to do that one time. Amen. But we can all use a cleansing. And when God comes and convicts our hearts, we need to listen to that. There was a great message we heard this morning. And it made me stop and think, am I lukewarm or am I on fire for God? Which one? And can I tell you this? If we're asking ourselves that question, I think that answers it for us. We can all be more on fire for God. Amen. This was important. So we saw the request of the Father. Second of all, let's look at the rebuke of the Savior. Now verse 48 here, after we saw, that this, we saw Jesus coming into the town here, we see that this man rushes to Jesus and asks Him to heal His Son, for He's at the point of death. In verse 48 here, we see something that kind of 
strikes us wrong, if you would, when, it's, when Jesus says, Then Jesus saith unto him, or then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. You know, Jesus here, he wasn't making small talk with this man. He knew what this man needed. He knew what the man was asking for. And he told the man, except you see signs and wonders, you're not going to believe. He made this personal. He didn't say, well, your son doesn't believe in me, so I'm not going to come. He made it personal to the man that was speaking with him. Jesus Christ makes it personal with us as well. He came to die for you, and he came to die for me. The rebuke was straight to this man who was asking for a miracle. Now we read this story through our holier-than-thou lenses, and we may say, well, this man obviously trusted in the Savior because look where he is. He's asking the Savior. He's pleading with the Savior. We saw earlier that he besought the Savior. Obviously, he knew who this man was and believed in him. But if this man trusted in Christ before this, why did he have to wait for his son to be at the point of death before he came to Christ? Why didn't this man come to Christ before? Why didn't this man come to Christ before he turned to the physicians? Why didn't he come to Christ before, uh, before all, of these, all of these things that they had tried? Because he didn't truly trust in Christ. And Jesus told him here, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. His son was at the point of death, and this man was looking for a remedy for his son. But he needed a remedy for himself. Amen. Aren't you glad that Christ doesn't give us what we deserve? Right. Aren't you glad that Christ came and he died for us even though we don't deserve that? Aren't you glad that Christ doesn't give us what we think is best for us? Amen. I can think of so many times that I have um, made a decision on something and then regretted that decision. Now at the time, I thought it was what was best for me, right? I said, yeah, this is going to work out this way. It's going to be planned out perfectly, and this is going to happen here. And it doesn't happen that way. But what if everything that we planned out, Christ said, okay, yeah, go ahead, try it. I'm glad he doesn't do that with us. I'm glad that he works everything out for his glory. But aren't we the same way that this man was here? We work so hard at something and say that we accomplish something, but the truth is, we're nothing without Christ. Just as this man had tried everything to make his son well, we try to do everything in our power rather than relying on God's omnipotent power. Right. Let's trust in him. Amen. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Thirdly, I want to talk to you tonight about the remedy of the son. This man who had been striving to accomplish everything in his own power he now hears from the Savior himself. What was the one and only remedy for his son? Jesus Christ. Amen. Only trusting in Christ. Now we heard the song, Simply Trusting. We've heard that, right? Amen. We've heard that song over and over and over in our head. No doubt we've had it playing in our house. No doubt we've found ourselves singing it maybe in our car. But we think to ourselves, is it really that simple? Is it that simple to just trust in Christ? Are you going to trust in Christ today? This man wanted a remedy for his son. The Bible tells us that this man went his way, as the Bible says in verse 50. You look at that, it says, Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Amen. Now Jesus didn't say, okay, now here's what you got to do. So in order for me to heal your son, so I'm going to need you to give me a ride to your house. And then when we get there, you're going to have to do the sacraments. And then after that, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take communion. And then after that, how about we pray for a little bit and um, well, we'll see if, if we can make it happen. That's not what he said here. Amen. This man came to Jesus asking for something. And Jesus told him, of course, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. 
The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. And Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Amen. How many times have we tried to rely on our own strength? How many times have we not came to Jesus first like this man did here in the very beginning when his son was dying? How many times have we said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do this first and then I'll trust in God. Well, I'll do this because this is going to work out well for me. I've known some people that say, well, I'm going to do what I want to do and get into my career and Go to school and then I'll serve God after that. Why not serve God now? Amen. Why not serve God through everything and let Him guide you? Why not let the Lord decide where you're going to go to school? Amen. Let the Lord decide what you're going to study. You may say, well, I've had my mind set on this since I was a kid. Yeah, but the Bible also says that our heart is Desperately wicked. Amen. And who can know it? We have this perfect plan for ourselves. But yet we just need to trust in Christ. Amen. Through everything. Again, I appreciate that song that the uh, Curtis is saying. About just trusting Christ until He leads us safely home. Is that what we're going to do? Are we going to trust Christ? I revert back to the, to the beginning of the message when we were talking about Jubilee. Are we going to trust Christ through those decisions? Now, each and every one of us that made those decisions, each and every one of us started out just as this man is here, right? We run to Christ. We're doing what we're supposed to do and saying, Christ, I made this decision for you, and by your will, you're going to help me see through, these, through on these decisions. And then we don't follow through on those decisions and somehow it's God's fault. We say, well, I thought it would be easier than this. Now this man we talked about, we saw that he was a nobleman. This man had everything going for him. No doubt he had achieved greatness in his career. He thought that everything should be going fine. But just like that, a sickness struck his son. Now what about, how about Adam and Eve? Think back to Adam and Eve. They had two sons, right? They had Cain and Abel. They, they had three, but they had two sons and, at this time. They had Cain and Abel. Now Adam and Eve had sinned against God, right? They sinned, sin entered in the world. They had two sons. They're going about, no doubt, training their sons to offer um, sacrifices unto God. Because we see that that uh, Abel brought an offering to God that was pleasing to him. And then we see Cain brings an offering to God that, of course, wasn't pleasing to him. And then we see that Cain killed Abel. Do you think it would have been easy for Adam and Eve to say, now God, you wanted us to serve you, and now one of our sons, the only one that was serving you, is dead. Isn't that how we think so many times? What about Noah? Leading his family for Christ. This man in a wicked world. Leading his family. Doing what he can to get by and to teach them the scriptures, no doubt. And God comes to him and he says, I want you to build a boat. Now no doubt Noah was making a living for his family, right? He was doing what he was supposed to do. But God said, I need you to do something. And for the next time in his life, Noah spent building a boat like God told him and preaching God's word. Amen. All because that's what God told him to do. Amen. He trusted in God and it saved his family. Amen. All because he trusted in God. But how about us tonight? So many times we say we trust in God. But that is until a decision comes up and we say, well, I think we should do this. But what about praying to God? Amen. Are you relying on your own strength tonight? 
You know, so many times we rely on our own strength for things. Like before we get saved, we say, well, I can do enough to get to heaven. Well, I can do enough just to get by. But so many times, we trust in our good deeds. We try to gain a spot in heaven. Can I ask you this tonight? I ask you to do this one thing. Stop everything that you're doing and repent of your sins and trust in Christ. Amen. Don't trust in the signs and wonders like what Christ was talking to him here. Christ said, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And of course the man believed and Christ said, go thy way, thy son liveth. He could only tell him that because he had trusted in Christ. Amen. The only reason that his son got the remedy that he needed is because this man trusted in Christ. You all know everything that, uh, that we've gone through as far as uh, you know, with Paisley and the things that the Lord has brought us through. Now can I say that it's been easy? Absolutely not. But can I say that our relationship with Christ has been strengthened? Absolutely. It's amazing to know the church family that we have here praying for us through each and everything that we've gone through with Paisley. Now, unfortunately, at the very beginning, I was just like this nobleman here. We were trying everything we could, going to every doctor we could. Yeah, we would pray for Paisley, but were we really praying from the heart? Or were we trusting in man? Now, I thank the Lord for every doctor that He's brought our way. Every single one has done an amazing job, and every time before surgery... Um, you know, when we've talked with Pastor, the thing that sticks out in my mind when, when uh, every time we get ready to go into surgery or whatever, and Pastor will call and he'll say, I want to pray with you. And every time he'll say this, Lord, we ask you to guide the hands of the doctors. Every time he'll say that. You know why? Because we're not trusting in the doctors. The doctors, yes, they've got earthly wisdom, but they don't have the wisdom of our God. And every time it sticks out in my mind, every time he says that, guide the hands of the doctors. Amen. We need to trust in Christ. Right. Every, everything that, uh, that, that has happened, you know, we, we have it you know, this perfect way. The doctor told us that Paisley needs to have a surgery. She needs to have this, uh, this um, VP shunt needs to be revised, right? Now, to have it revised sounds you know, simple in our minds. Like, okay, you just got to have it revised. No big deal, right? So they go in, they revise it. No big deal. She heals from it. It's great. Then a week later, start having issues. So we call. And uh, of course, you know, they say bring her in. So we bring her in and they say we need to do emergency surgery. Now the first thing that comes to our mind is, Lord, we trusted you then for the first surgery. And now we're back for this surgery. And you wonder to yourself, what is God doing? But through each and every way, He's used everything to build our trust in Him. Everything. And I, I, I thank the Lord for everything that He's brought us through. And I thank God that now that she's, she's doing very well, this morning when I was downstairs teaching Sunday school, she thought she was teaching. And uh, she was just you know, there talking the whole time. So um, I, I turned around the one time and I said, are you teaching this lesson or am I? So, um, and of course she just kept talking. But um, you know, it's, it, it's great to see God's blessings through us trusting Him. Amen. Let me ask you this tonight. You going through a trial? You going through a difficulty? You going through a decision that you need to make? Maybe you say, well, I've got such and such decision. I've got this one or this one. Which one do I need to make? How about you be like this man and beseech Christ? How about you be like this man and go to Christ? Amen. Don't wait until the decision is already made. Don't wait until whatever it is is at the near point of death like what we're talking about here in the Scripture. Trust Christ now. Amen. That's the only place your remedy is will come from. Amen. Don't trust in the signs and the wonders. Trust in Christ and the work that He accomplished on Calvary for you. Amen. Now maybe you're here tonight and you've 
lost your passion for souls. Brother McKay was talking today about being cold or lukewarm or hot, and he talked about that passion for souls and being out there soul winning and knowing that you're on fire for God, soul winning would be one of those. Right now, of course, it makes it difficult. But are you praying for every tract that you hand out? Amen. Are you handing out tracts? Pastor has said uh, many times through this whole pandemic that the track rack's there and everything's free and take it. You know what would be a blessing? Seeing the track rack completely emptied because we're giving them out. Not because they're sitting in our cars. Not because they're sitting on our table at home. But because we're giving them out. Are we doing that? Are we on fire for God like we heard this morning? Have we lost our passion for souls? Maybe you've tried to rear your children and you bring them to church, but yet at home, you live a different way. Maybe you bring them to church and you say, well, they'll hear about God at church. Can I tell you this? They come to church three times a week. But they're at church, or they're at home seven days a week. Are we trusting Christ in our home life as well? Maybe you're in a financial difficulty. Maybe you don't know how the next bill is going to be paid. Maybe you don't know where your next meal would come from. Are you trusting Christ? You say, yeah, it's easy for you to say, you're not in my predicament. Yeah, but Jesus Christ cares for each and every one of us. And if He cares for the sparrows, you know that He cares for you. He just wants you to trust in Him. So many times we say, well, I trust in Him for my salvation, and then we live the rest of our life on our own agenda. We need to trust in Him each and every day. The remedy for every circumstance is the exact same. Trust in Christ. It worked then for this man. And it'll work now. Just as old Desert Pete we talked about in the beginning said in the beginning of the message here, you should not rely on your own reasoning, but rather on the reasoning of Christ. What if this man hadn't followed those instructions? What if this man would have said, well, the letter on this old pump here, ah, it probably doesn't mean anything. Goes over, takes the bottle of water, drinks it. Now, if he did that, he would have a temporary, um, temporary relief from his thirst, right? But then his thirst would come back. Not only would his thirst come back because he didn't trust in what was said, but now the next person that comes would probably die of thirst because that water wasn't there for them. Are you trusting in Christ through every circumstance? Because if you're not, and you're not having an impact on someone else because you're trusting in Christ, What's going to happen to them spiritually? You say, well, they need to rely on God. Yeah, but we also need to be the ones that that aren't stumbling blocks to our brothers and sisters. Are you trusting in Christ? Is your faith in Christ? So many people are going to die and go to hell because we fail to give out a track. Because we fail to give them the gospel. Because we fail to act like a Christian at work. We may go to work each and every day and say, well, they'll see it in my life. If they're really interested, they'll ask. But yet each and every day we go to work and we're interested enough in talking about sports. We're interested enough in talking about what happened in in the uh, political world. But yet we're not interested enough to tell them about Christ. The only thing that would change everything that's happening in our country is Christ. You say, well, there's division in our country. People don't want to hear about Christ. Aren't you glad that someone told you about Christ? Aren't you glad that someone trusted God enough to say, God, I don't care what's going to happen to me. I don't care what what they're going to say about me. I don't care what the the, uh, people are going to do to me. I'm going to tell people about you. Is that us today? Do we trust Christ enough to tell people about Him? How He died on Calvary for us. Now, He gave us an instruction manual. Now, those of you know, and of course, I I say it's a joke, but it's probably really not. It's probably true. 
Men hate instructions. I will put something together four or five times before I read the instructions. I don't know why that is. It's just because I know how to do this and I'm going to do it right. And then I get done and there's a part laying here. and I'm like, where did that go? That was nice of them to give me extra parts. But can I tell you this? This instruction manual here is inerrant. It will never steer you wrong. Everything in this book is what we need to live. Everything in this book is what Christ gives us to go about our each and every day. And everything in this book, the only way we can believe this is if we trust in Christ. The only way that this can speak to us is if we trust in Christ. If you read a book and you don't agree with it, kind of like an instruction manual with me, it ain't going to help me. But if I read this book knowing that God wants to give me something out of this and trusting Him to give me something each and every time I read this book, each and every time our pastor opens this Word and preaches to us, if we trust Him through that, then He's going to lead us. Where is our faith at tonight? All we have to do is trust Him and trust His Word. Simply trusting Jesus. That is all. Amen. Now this song here, Simply Trusting, I'm going to read it to you. It's a very familiar song. It says, Simply Trusting Every Day. Trusting through the stormy way. Even when my faith is small. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Amen. Trusting as the moments fly. Trusting as the days go by. Trusting Him, whatever befall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Amen. Brightly doth His Spirit shine into this poor heart of mine. While He leads, I cannot fall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Amen. Singing if my way is clear and praying if the path be drear. If in danger for him call, trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting him while life shall last, trusting him till earth be past. Till within the jasper wall, trusting Jesus, that is all. Now we saw here that when Jesus said, Go thy way, the son liveth, it says, The man believed. Now we read earlier that when this man was on his way home, we saw that his servants met him and told him that his son was healed. The father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed, and his whole house. Amen. His whole house believed because he decided to trust in Christ. You may say, well, my kids have gone astray. Trust in Christ. Amen. Are we trusting in Christ? Are we doing everything that Christ wants us to do? Are we living for Him? Are we only saying we're trusting in Christ? Or is our heart and our actions saying that we're trusting in Christ? Which is it tonight? Are you trusting Jesus? As the song says, trusting Jesus, that is all. Let's pray.